when calamity screams rendical. Night. A girl's in a shed. Fair-skinned, slightly thick attractive body in early twenties. Her lovely countenance is unsettled. About what? Ran both hands along the hair and she looks outside a window. Not a soul in sight. The moon was dark revealed the house. The only one present far as the eye can see. The vicinity had no visible population. The short trip to reach would have been no sweat. However, she's reluctant. Still unsettled. The purpose-used shed is empty of horses, and the door is securely closed. Her location must be a hiding spot. Why? She can't live in a shed. A chance will have to be made. A horseshoe hanging on the wall is taken. Opening the door as little as dared, tossed as far as possible and away from the house. Then hurriedly closed it back. The girl peeks through a slit in the door. Nothing at first. Then a mysterious figure, difficult to make out in the dark, rushes past her view in the distance, reaching the point where the shoe landed. Now was the time. Opening the door, move quickly, however in a trot instead of the characteristic run, relying it with grand speed but limit noise signature. Felt a million seconds when by the time the house reached. Up a few steps, onto the porch, her hand shot for the doorknob, thankfully it turned, and she no sooner rushed inside. The girl turns and looks back. Relief on her visage. They made it. Safe from whatever the night promised. She glances sideways away from the open door. Suddenly she took a step and slammed it shut. The terror had arrived. Because in the nick of time saw it rushing her way caused it to bang into the wooden door. This door had a small oval-shaped window in the upper portion. A head raised and looked through. A rat. The biggest rodent ever laid eyes on. Hands rose to either side on her face and jaw drop. Monstrous dentition, red eyes, furry, replete with vicious stare. The reason why she was perturbed in the shed. It smashed a front paw through the glass and swipes. She close to the door, it near touches her. She jumps back. Failing the head lowered out of view. Next to clawed the door and resumed banging. Would not stop, fueled by relentless vigor. The girl was losing her safe place. She reduced to watching in horror. No fancy escape dreamed up now. Into several bangs the door hinges began to come loose. The creature must be no featherweight, exceeding a hundred pounds. Her heart races. A human brain has the flight or flee instinct. She didn't think to do neither in the current frame of mind. The more scratching and banging went on, looser the hinges, finally unable to resist, gave way. The door fell to the floor, non too subtle slam and all. The creature steps inside on all fours, walking on the door, then halts in front of her. The residence's illusion of safety that instant shattered. Both stared at the other. Looked very like a rat on steroids. Many times the size of the ones foraging dustbins and implicated in the Black Death, the disease that many lifetimes ago, adorned Europe in cadavers. The thing presenting a height of a few feet. The moments pass, and the oddity stood through hind legs enough to reach eyeball to eyeball with a grown human. Biggest rodent ever laid eyes on. Stepping off the door it attacked. The girl is knocked on her back and it's a topper. Doing what beasts are capable of snapping its jaws and clawing. She screams in terror. Instinct versus a savage and the former led to the girl struggling. She tried to push back, hitting. In the midst she discerned something. A smell. Asking to stomach a glaring, repellent odor. She knew it wanted nothing more than do the most grievous upon her flesh. It held the upper hand. Out of the blue jabs it in the eye with a finely manicured fingernail completely by chance. The creature raises up, roaring from pain. The girl rolls, putting herself on top this time. Taking a chance for life ran for it. Past various rooms, out the back door and into the black night. This is something for great-grandnephews to hear death by rat. Biggest rodent ever laid eyes on is no metaphor. Didn't look a capybara, the world's biggest living rodent. Tell girlfriends over the phone would bring a hard time convincing them. The first-hand terror experienced adding the tail was longer than a human is tall. The girl was sure her eyes and bruises don't lie. Anyone here to participate in her misery would have a change of heart. So big it's writable. She marvels. She by now halted forty feet from the place. Instead of running away, re-enters through a window. Next barricades the door with a table, goes to a corner in the room and sat upright in a curled position. Bent knees to the chest and arms around them. Fear hadn't left. Some time lapsed and thought herself worthy of the Hall of Fame for the dummies. Then rethought deciding it's the smart move as the giant can catch her outside. Imagination lead to her outdoors, chased by the rodent, and screamed when it caught up to her, and all is black. Did not crave to entertain the thought actually safer being in the same place as this damned hell rat. Something told her sitting tight wasn't getting her out of this. More time passed by then. The door blockage has been removed. She walks quietly, making as little noise as she dared. The girl stopped and would not relish peeking round the corner. Fortunately wouldn't have to. Had the battle an attack of nerves so as fight down what came next despite the fact. Her arm slowly raised a mirror in the hand just beyond the wall's edge. The hell rat's reflection showed. Oh no. That thing made itself comfortable. The abnormality was in the room doing animal behavior. Boy it's so big, she thought. How was a girl without battle experience supposed to fight and live? The creature tends to an itch by nibbling the long tail. 
She lowers the glass. Many know nothing of the fancy ratter Samuel Whiskers. Street ones cough for blood sport, morphing into pets. Old time England had upper crust ladies show them off on a monkey leash resting on her lap adorned in ribbons. Not everyone resents them spreading plague. She walks backward slowly. The kitchen is where she found herself next. Ran outside I'm rat bait. She was in luck again. Unlike most kitchens a door is present encouraging a barricade that she built. The windows are partially blocked too unable to get enough to deny view entirely. She's running low on options. She can't hold out if it decided, screw the barrier, I'm busting in for that cute lass. She mentally put aside the food there she could eat. Her mannerism in concentration. Then, burning sounds good. She began scouring the kitchen for something to do just that, burning the house down sounds good. A fleeting sliver of time immediately came wondering if she mad. The girl bent over when called for. To survive searching every nook and cranny no price at all. Naturally she'll have to be quiet and cautious. Exterminators from Rentacol are far away taking care of those tiny rats. Opening the cabinet doors below the sink came a spark of a different kind. Triggered when a small rectangle green and white packet is found. Time is critical she could be found any moment. Light of dawn was cracking. Far outside the kitchen she's banging spoon to pan, the rodent if that's the right word, instantly turns its head. She runs, the noise of her footsteps aren't a bother now, actually a help. The speeding creature stops on all fours. Bread crumbs smeared in peanut butter form a trail on the floor. Sniff the first and ate it. Moving forward slowly ate each crumb. She smelled the scent without laying eyes on it. The beast was getting closer. The rat stopped. The crumbs end to a pot of water, mixed in with bread slices floating in something else. The girl herself stooped behind the kitchen door just a little way beyond the pot, which opened ever so slowly and pushed the glass through the gap, small as she dared make. Again a horrible reflection. The creature had its nose near the concoction. Rats being the qualify alongside roaches and microbes to inherit the earth, but this abomination twists that. The creature looks hesitant. Rats, scavengers are renowned for sniffing danger. Come on eat you overgrown vermin. She willed. Unbeknownst to her a dangerous act because going by regular rats, which have decent senses, magnified the danger to the close-by girl. Free food supplanted playing it safe and ate the soaked bread. A blue tongue licked the mouth. Suddenly griped by convulsions, all because that packet of insecticide powder len ate. This poisoner's friend takes care all kinds of unwanted pests. A favorite suicide method to Trinidadians. The rodent fell limp. Bacha ugly she said relieved and lowers her head. Beginning to stand up, her mirror shows the thing on all fours, again staring his own image. Is here she saw it too. The girl startled pulls the glass back. She did not have any defense, this had to was supposed to work. Before she could come with a plan B she hadn't figured out. The rat slams the door open. Definitely not a capybara. It clearly saw its quarry. She stands. In nature making yourself bigger is a strategy. It stood on the hind legs and walked slowly towards her, clawed front legs pointing ahead as though to grab. She's stepping backward in fright. Her back eventually touches the kitchen's island. No escape. She says, crap. Should have poisoned the crumbs too. The rat collapsed to the ground and after one small spasm, still forever. Weaker than the monster but smarter brained. She looked towards the steadily rising sun. Cody twists and turns then snaps awake. It's her bed. Turning her head to the window reveals night's blackness. Commenting with a touch of hilarity, starred in my own nightmare. Yay. She has an idea from whence it came. A rat is seen someplace is not the suspect. She picks a Kindle tablet off her fine belly and looked at passages on its screen. You're the culprit, eh? In the middle of reading a horror novel about people trapped in a game of death. There was big as hell man-sized whatever its appellation hell rat. Then sleep caught up with me.